Jim Furry, welcome back to Unstable TV. So we're checking out another reaction sent in from our guys and friends all the way in the United States of America. But before we get into that, if this is your first time on the channel, do not forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell. And if you're back with us again, thanks. So what are we checking out today, Danielle? So today, James, we were sent why Gen Z won't join the military. Ooh, we have a few ideas ourselves as to why they wouldn't. So let's see what they actually want. Because that does not pay well and let the rich go to war. So let's find out together, let's go. The military has a problem. It can't find enough humans. To appeal to Gen Z, the army is pumping out TikTok style, get ready with me videos like this. I'm gonna show you yep. my daily hair makeup routine as well as discuss some of the updated army That's ridiculous. Standards. I know. But it's hardly working. Get I mean, blown away with 800 me. people saw that video on Go Army's YouTube channel. The U.S. Army had its most difficult recruiting year since it ended the draft in 1973. The U.S. military is even going to esports and mom influencers, trying to convince you to join. Ooh, mom influencers. influencers. Are not telling them to go into the military. Moms, dads, uncles, coaches, pastors do not see it as a good choice. But what does all of this mean for the world's most powerful country? The military fell short of its recruitment goals by Ooh. over 60,000 recruits in 2022. This is the first time the military missed its recruitment goals in more than a decade. Leaving the Army, Navy, and Air Force roughly 30,000 recruits short of their goals. And just look at these numbers. The number of people who have joined the military each year has declined by more than 20% since 2010. Yeah. The average age of a new recruit is 20 years old. It used to be 18 just a few years ago. And the military is having a harder time recruiting people from certain demographics like women and minorities. But why are people not wanting to join the military anymore? Well, here are four reasons. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have taken a toll on the military's reputation. See, many people are hesitant to join an institution that has been involved in so much conflict. And maybe Made people wonder what was the point of that. Second, there didn't used to be so many options for young people. Today you can be a software engineer in your basement, a YouTuber, a graphic designer, but a few decades ago you were limited to the jobs that were available in your physical community. Third, the job market is very strong right now in the US. The unemployment rate is low. There are many good paying jobs available in the civilian sector, and that means the idea of joining the military is less appealing. I mean, so many people right now want to work from home instead of an office. So how of many people will yeah. actually want to work long hours in physical conditions and maybe even be deployed out of the country for a cause they may or may not believe in. And number four, the military is no longer seen as a guaranteed ticket to a job and a stable future like it might have been seen just a few decades ago. And many people are now more aware of the dangers and challenges of military service. But hold on, the biggest culprit of all of this may actually ironically be veterans. See, 80% of all new recruits have a family member who have served in the military. But now many veterans are telling their kids or grandkids not to join anymore. I did because my father had served in the Second World War in the Army in New Guinea and the Philippines and I thought it was my obligation to serve. Some veterans are saying, and I quote, I saw too many of my friends die in Iraq and Afghanistan. I don't want my kids to go through that. The military is not what it used to be. It's become Wait, more politicized and I don't want my kids to be involved in any potential conflicts. There are other ways to serve your country without joining the military. You can volunteer your time to help others. You can it's donate okay. to charity or you can get involved in politics. Your biggest source of recruits used to come join you proudly because their family served, and now many of those same people don't even want to join anymore. You can see how this is turning into a massive problem. See, the military is the backbone of the US national security. It needs a strong pool of recruits to maintain its readiness. If the military can't recruit enough people, it might not be able to meet its missions. So in order to deal with this problem, the US military is kind of lowering its bar. The military is now relying on older recruits and recruits with lower test scores. It's also offering higher bonuses and incentives to attract more recruits and even reducing its training standards. The government is taking drastic steps to address its recruiting problem. 
The Pentagon is now increasing its advertising budget and it's offering up to $50,000 just in bonuses if you join. The government is also working hard to improve its image to appeal to more women and minorities. But it remains to be seen if those efforts will be effective. See, the recruiting problem is a massive one and there's no easy solution here. But hold up, does all of this really matter since now things are shifting? I mean, technology is becoming such a big part of warfare. Do we really need so many humans on the ground I mean, one day, won't we just deploy humanoid robots? Well, yes, technology is playing an increasingly important role in war. You have drones and robots and other high-tech weapons that are more and more common, which are reducing the need for human soldiers. But humans are still essential to warfare. See, humans are needed to make decisions, to operate the technology, and to provide support to the troop. There are still types of warfare that require human soldiers, like counterinsurgency operations. So yes, it's true. Technology Technology is playing a more important role in warfare, but humans are still essential to the military. And the US military needs a strong pool of recruits to maintain its readiness. But this is not just an American problem. Other countries are having a hard time to get enough young people to want to join their militaries. So what are other countries doing? Israel has compulsory military service for all men and women between the ages of 18 to 21. This ensures that the military has enough number of recruits even though there is not a lot of interest in military service among young Israelis. Then there's South Korea. South Korea has a volunteer military, but the government offers financial incentives to people who join. And these incentives are pretty good. They include free college tuition and a guaranteed job after military service. And then there's Sweden. Sweden has a volunteer military as well, but the government has been struggling to recruit enough people. So as a response, the government is making it easier than ever to join the military military while also increasing the pay and benefits for military personnel. Both President Biden and former President Trump have expressed concern about the US military's recruiting troubles. Biden is saying that the military needs to do a better job of recruiting young people, and he has pledged to increase the military's advertising budget. <laughs> Trump has also said that the military needs to do a better job of recruiting, and he has proposed a number of changes to the military's recruiting policies. But what happens if the US can't fix this? Well, well, for one, the military could be less effective. The military will have to rely more on technology to compensate for the lack of humans, but this could lead to problems since technology can be unreliable and vulnerable to attacks. Another thing that can happen is the military will just be more expensive. See, the military will have to spend more money on technology to compensate for the lack of human soldiers. This could lead to budget problems since the military already spends a significant amount of money on technology. And finally, the military will become less diverse. See, already it's faced with the challenges of not being able to recruit enough women and minorities. And if there are fewer humans in the military, it will become even more difficult to recruit these groups, which could ultimately have have a negative impact on the military's effectiveness because it would be less representative of the population that it's supposed to defend. But I want to know, what do you think? What should the US military be doing to recruit young people from joining instead of wanting to be YouTubers? And do you see this as a problem? What does the future of the world's most powerful military look like? Let me know your comments below. While you're at it, check out more of my videos like this and don't forget to subscribe. Of course, they should be doing more upbeat TikTok dances because that's how you recruit people. I mean, they're saying let's go away from, you know, YouTube and stuff like that, and then they're using TikTok. Yeah. Make it make sense. Of course, a very big shout out to the original content creator. Make sure you check him out, give him a like, subscribe, and share all of that good YouTube stuff. And a very big shout out to you guys for sending this through. I don't think it's job market as it is. We can physically see, and we have stories all over the world from veterans of how they were treated after their military service and laying down their life for their country. Some of them were left on the street. They didn't care about them. The government were like, ah, well, and just threw them there. And they should be always given out incentives, not bonus money now. They should be always given that to any soldier serving. They should always be given a guaranteed job afterwards. They shouldn't be just thrown back into society and nothing for their service. Mm. Or not for their mental health either. Yeah. Just so, so much stuff that comes out of America where veterans are just left to fend for themselves after serving their country, which is a very bad play and a very negative look on the government in America. What do you think about that, Danielle? This is the last point you made saying it, the military needs to be more diverse so the rest of the world can see. I don't really understand that because, you know, 
you're going to war but I don't think people really care about the colour of your skin or where you're from they just want to say it's their own skin so I don't particularly understand why the militaries in America needs to be like extremely diverse and stuff like that I don't get that I do understand why a lot of people don't want to go to war though because it's war yep I just done a quick scan of his comment section there and a lot of people said either they understand why people don't want to because like what James said the veterans when they're coming back they're like it's just not worth it and people saying the military industrial complex in America is also really bad that people don't want to put their life on the line for a political issue that could be that could be figured out in a different way instead of just going and starting conflict a better idea why don't every politician around the world in their fancy suits get in a ring against each other and leave everyone else over I'm sure there'll be no wars after that because there'll be no more money going into their pockets. But that is true though, if they, you know, start fighting their own wars, there, there will be no wars. It won't happen. But if you don't fight the wars for them, they won't get any money. Exactly. Did you think about that? Don't be so selfish. And we're talking about every, <laughs> every, every military here, not just America, by the way. Yeah. It's sad to see the amount of people like in America and a lot of veterans who gave their heart and soul into it and they had to watch their friends die in front of them and the treatment they get after it. How society and most most importantly the government that enlisted them just leaves them behind. They just get forgotten about. People show the respect, like the public show the respect to the veterans but the government are the ones who enlisted them and brought them there and they should be responsible every time for them. Now they're feeling the blunt of that. that Veteran, like veterans were always gonna go back and tell their family what happened. That's a given. Why would you not tell your family? Why would you not warn them of danger? You're going to prevent danger and keep the peace. You're not gonna not tell people where to keep the peace and tell them the, the oncoming danger. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of them are coming back with PTSD as well. They don't want to see their grandkids going through that either. And that's fully understandable. When they were saying beforehand, cause I heard anyway that it was the military was supposed to pay for your college and stuff like that and that's why a lot of people joined like i can understand that because the college in america is so expensive people don't want war people don't want conflict and people certainly don't want to be in it themselves so i think it is a bit of a turning point for the world and i'm talking about the whole world now not just america about the way people look at militaries and look at conflict i think it's going to change a little bit do I think as a society, we're all just fed up with war. Yeah. We're sick of hearing about it. We're sick of watching grandparents or parents coming back from this and how they've been treated. And we don't want ourselves going through that. All the governments around the world, they don't really care about what they're putting their soldiers through. And they don't. Like I know a lot of people are going to be like, some are saying this, yeah, but let's actually look into where these veterans are afterwards. Why should people coming up now lay their lives down for a country that didn't help their family members? When you look at it like that, you can understand where the new generation are coming from. Like, we've no idea what way these these kids had to watch their grandparents or parents after after war. We've no idea what it was like for them and how they felt. And that wasn't just one or two cases. That was a wide range of cases. We can understand why people don't want to join. What does that mean for the world? We don't know. This is going to be a wait and see job. America's probably not going to be number one anymore. We're not aiming at the people now. The people that are actually looking after their country and the veterans that have come before that did lay their lives down from all over the world for their countries and the American veterans watching their soldiers. We're not aimed at you. We're aimed at the government and how they treated you guys. That has been our two cents and we will chop ourselves out of this.